Welcome back to the series on data structures in Kotlin. In the last video, we started implementing a very basic linked list using just the node class. In this video, we're going to implement a legitimate linked list class with a head and a tail and everything. So a linked list has the concept of a head and a tail. They refer to the first and last nodes of the list. We'll also keep track of the size of the linked list in the size property. Now just as a helper utility kind of function kind of thing, let's add the isEmpty function and use it while we're printing the contents of the list. So the way this works is that it calls toString on the head of the list. The head of the list is an object of type node. So what happens is that it's going to call toString function from the node class we defined earlier. And when it calls that on the head, it's going to print the next node and so on. We're also going to allow adding items to this linked list. There are three ways to add items to a linked list. Let's start with push. Push adds values to the front of the list. This is also called head first insertion. You create a new node which holds the new value and points to the node that was previously considered to be the head of the list. Now your new node is the new head. Its next value is the previous head. So you've entered an item at the beginning of the list. In the case in which you're pushing into an empty list, the new node is both the head and the tail of the list. Since the list now has a new node, increment the value of size. Let's test this out and see if it works. Here's a list with a couple of items inside. Let's try and print it. And it does work. What a surprise. That's pretty cool, but let's add something cooler. Let's implement the fluent interface pattern to be able to chain multiple push calls together. Kind of like the builder pattern where you return the original object that you're working on so that you can make other calls to it in a chain. So you return a linked list of type T and then you just call apply on the whole thing. And then we're going to be able to say list.push3.push5.push7 three dot push five dot push seven, and it'll be the same output. Great, this also works. Wow. So the next operation we're going to add is append. Append adds values to the end of the list, also known as tail end insertion. So like before, if the list is empty, we're going to have to update both head and tail to the new node. Since append on an empty list is functionally identical to the push we implemented, you just call push to do the work for you in this case. In all the other cases, you create a new node after the current tail node. Tail will never be null here because we've already handled the case where the list is empty in the previous if statement. This is important. Tail is never going to be null because you've already handled the case where the list is empty in the if statement. Since this is a tail end insertion, your new node is also the tail of the list. It's now the very end of the list, meaning the tail. You also have to increment the size here since a new value was added. Let's also add the fluent interface to this function. Again, we return a linked list, we apply, and in this return statement, we're going to return the object we're working with. Let's test it out, see if it works. You never know. Here's the list, append, append, append. Yes, it does work. Amazing. So the third and final operation for adding values is insert. This operation inserts a value at a particular place in the list. So there's two steps involved here. Finding the particular node in the list, inserting the new node after the node you found. So first we'll implement the code to find the node where you want to insert your value. Node at. 
This method is going to try and retrieve a node in the list based on the given index. Since you can only access the nodes of the list from the head onwards, you'll have to make an iterative traversal. So you have to go one by one, next, 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 and so on. So you create, first of all, a new reference to the head and keep track of the current number of steps you've taken in the list. Next, using a while loop, we're going to move the reference down the list until we reach the desired index. Empty lists or out of bounds indices will result in a null return value. So now we need to insert the new node where we found it. This is where we add the actual insert function. In the case where this method is called with the tail node, meaning the end you want to insert at the end, you call the functionally identical function, which is the append method we just wrote. It's going to handle inserting at the end, tail end insertion. Otherwise, we create a new node and link its next property to the next node of the list. Pretty obvious. Then we reassign the next value of the specified node to link it to the new node that we just created. So you take care of the front and the back and in the middle is your new node that you just made. So let's test this function as well. We're going to create a new list, push three values to it, three, two, one. So you have a list with 3, 2, 1 pushed into it. So push is head first insertion. They're going to appear as 1, 2, 3. What we're going to do is stop at the middle node, which is 2, and insert the negative value of the index we're running on into that place. So you're going to have 1, 2, and then minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and then we're going to continue to 3. As you can see, this is exactly what happened. But for simplicity, let's just try to add zeros in that place. So we're just going to replace this minus one times i with zero. I think it's much simpler. And there you see three zeros in the middle of the list. And that is a list of all the ways that you can insert, push, append, add values to a linked list. The next video we're going to discuss removing values from a linked list. Tune in for that.